It's a lot of hard work. It's not all going to ride on the earth. It's mopping floors. It's not just saying I'm going out on disaster and, and then go home. It's serving food. It's playing with children. It's guiding children. Thank you. It's a great feeling. It's an indescribable feeling that you have. Emergency response vehicle. The vehicle part of the picture is what we want to cover next. The IRV has to be ready to roll in an emergency and respond. The first step is maintenance, which is every team member's job, ensuring the IRV is operated safely. Daily maintenance includes checking all fluid levels, preferably before you even leave the hotel in the morning, and checking those tires. You have to do your daily maintenance to make sure everything is in good shape because you never know when you're going to be called. Maintenance of the IRV is fairly routine. The IRV team operating the IRV takes care of it. You can't expect the next IRV team or the logistics staff at a relief operation or anyone else to stay on top of the daily needs of the vehicle. Number one, make sure all fluid levels are in the safe zone. Check the oil every time you fill up and keep a record. Write the level down on your log. That way you can track the IRV to see if it's losing oil or other fluids. It's important to check the transmission fluid too, especially on older models. Tire pressure is very important. IRVs have different sized tires depending upon the model. Check inside the door for the correct tire pressure. Yeah, there. they got some air in them, that's for sure. The inside tires have to be checked just as often as the outside tires. The air pressure must be the same in both tires on dual wheels. All right. Failure to maintain proper air pressure can be dangerous to both the IRV team and others on the road. Okay. Inside the IRV, make sure everything is tight. After they've been driving around for a while and food and supplies have jostled against the straps and cabinets, screws and straps can get loose. Make sure the IRV has enough fuel. It is recommended filling it up at the end of each run, since you never know what can happen. Remember, some IRVs may be powered by diesel and others by gasoline. Know which one you're operating. Putting gasoline in diesel engines or vice versa can ruin them. A safety feature on the newer IRVs is safety netting. Whenever you go from the cab to the rear or vice versa, be sure to close the netting. It may protect you in an accident or if the cambros have come loose. And everyone on the IRV must wear seat belts. The IRV can carry no more than five people and all must be buckled in. If you're sitting in the window jump seat, turn it to the rear and lock it in place. An IRV isn't a van, an SUV, or a pickup truck. It's a truck, and it's a lot taller and wider and has bigger blind spots than the vehicles you're probably used to driving. Backing up the IRV requires caution and being aware of blind spots. See this? The driver can't see what's directly behind the vehicle. There are blind spots on the IRV. Once an object passes my side view mirror and goes behind the IRV, I cannot see it. If I don't see it, I could run over it. Whenever you back up, your partner should get out and spot you. Back. Well, I always maintain visual contact with the driver because he may not hear my voice. And the hand signals are just for that, in case he can hear me. Keep coming back. I'm looking in the mirror, the driver's side mirror, looking at my team member. I'm also checking the right-hand side mirrors in case anything that comes up that my team member is not able to see. Back. Here are the signals back. for backing up. To your right. Turning right or left. slowing and stopping. Always place a chalk behind the driver's side wheel. Use two chalks if you're on an incline. And be aware of the size of the vehicle. IRVs are between 10 and 13 feet tall. 
bridges, overhangs at gas stations, fast food drive-in windows, and banks may be lower than the earth. The result can be either a damaged vehicle or damage to a structure. Therefore, it's a good practice to have your partner get out and see whether there's clearance rather than risk an accident. And make sure the antenna clears the overhang as well. Gotta go back. If you don't pay attention to them, you can turn these ears into a convertible real quick. You can take the tops right off of them. The herb is also longer and heavier than a car, which means you probably can't make it through when the light turns yellow. Slow down and prepare to stop at the signal and drive safely. Obeying traffic laws is always important. If you get a ticket, the Red Cross will not take responsibility for it. It's your ticket. So be careful, be courteous, and drive responsibly. The Herb is not a four-wheel drive or off-road vehicle. Stay on the roads and off of rough terrain. A disaster generally affects road conditions. Tree limbs and debris may be in the street. When water is covering the road, use extreme caution. Do not drive in high or standing water. The rule of thumb is, if you don't know how deep the water is, stay out of it. We never go into hazardous area without prior approval. In water hazards, uh, we never go, in, go through water that's up over the rims of the vehicle. And even before we do that, we get out and we check for uh, potholes or washouts. We depend a lot on the uh, fire department and the police to uh, give us the okay to go into what might be a hazardous area. We're going to go back down this road here. Yeah. There's been a funnel pass spotted down at the golf course. At so, the golf course? Yeah, for a funnel pass, golf course about two miles down the road. Okay. They made the announcement about five minutes ago. In situations like this, it's better to play it safe than risk your safety and that of the earth. What happens if you have an emergency? The two-way radio in the cab is a line of communication you will use frequently to speak to your supervisor or base or to other herbs. The radio may be pre-programmed to the proper frequency or you should find out what the correct frequency is and be prepared to set it. 1078, this is Rocky Mountain Kitchen. Monitor the radio whenever you're on duty. It runs on the truck batteries. When you're parked and monitoring, you'll have to run the engine once in a while or the battery will die. When you speak on the radio, remember you're the Red Cross and you're broadcasting. People can hear you. If you get a flat or break down, get help. Never attempt to change a tire yourself. Call the road service provider as soon as you can. You'll always have that information in the glove compartment or document box. Hi, how's it going? Everybody okay here? Accidents happen, of course, despite precautions. First, check for injuries and do first aid as necessary. Then call the police immediately, no matter how minor the accident. If other vehicles are involved, do what you would do if it were your own car. Get names and phone numbers and insurance information. Occasionally an accident will happen, and the herb crew has to deal with it. You have an accident report kit. All of the information on this needs to be filled out completely, and it needs to be turned into your supervisor. Be sure that you get the officer's name and his badge number so that we'll have the right information uh, when we go up to request the police report. State the facts as you recall them and exchange information. Okay. Inform your supervisor of the accident as soon as possible and provide the accident report to logistics. This is Herb 1096. If you're traveling to or from a disaster, call the dock at national headquarters and report the accident to the American Red Cross Claims Reporting Hotline. Do you copy? So remember, think safety first. You're driving this vehicle for the American Red Cross. Maintaining the earth is important for safety and for service. It requires just a little maintenance, not much more than you probably already do for your own car at home. In our next segment, we'll show you how herbs are deployed at your local chapter and on a national disaster assignment.